All right, I'm gonna address the elephant in the room. My hair is green and I'm a little hat guy. We can talk about that later. Howdy, how's it going? My name is Benji and welcome back to my channel. Today I am really excited to kind of pick up where my series has left off when it comes to discussing my live setup and what I'm kind of trying to do with it. And I'm really excited to talk about this one because I have stumbled into kind of my perfect balance. So for me, building a live setup has always been about trying to bridge the gap between improvisational and structure because I want to keep myself engaged. I wanna keep myself being able to add new things and do new unique things, but I don't wanna keep it so free form that no one's going to actually enjoy listening to what I put out. And I think I just accidentally landed on something perfect and I'm really excited to share that. So to catch you guys up to speed, my uh, iterations of this live setup have been unfocused in the first episode, too large in the second episode, small but not very flexible when it comes to improvisation in the third episode, and uh, now we're here. So if you're in my Discord, you know this, but uh, I've been planning out essentially to kind of create a perfect live Euro rack setup where I take this Arturia rack group case and I add another rack group case on the bottom and make it a big clamshell case and it'll give me the flexibility essentially to have the top half dedicated to ambient music, bottom half dedicated to techno music, and I can kind of work between the two and create different atmospheres. Um, so it's a work in progress obviously, but I'm very excited to kind of build it out and see what it turns into. So in the process of kind of developing that case, I realized that I don't need one or two of the modules that I currently have. Uh, and one of those modules was the IntelliGel Plonk. I love the Plonk, I think it's a great module. I'll probably buy one again later in the future. But just when it comes to what I'm looking at in the case right now, I decided that it would be uh, a good decision for me to trade it out for something else, get something that's gonna be a little more focused towards what I'm doing right now, and just kinda, you know, replace it with something like a 2HP bell because I only ever ended up using it for the bell sound. Not because the other sounds weren't good, but because I just ended up being drawn towards that sort of sound and I realized that I can get a lot of that functionality in a whole lot less space. So I put it up on a local Facebook group. I said, does anybody want to trade any one of this list of modules that I'm kind of looking for to push myself in a little bit more of a techno direction? Um, does anybody want to trade for this plunk? And I want to shout out, uh, I can't remember if you prefer Wes or Wesley, but um, thank you so much uh, for this trade. It is awesome and I appreciate it. And uh, you told me you subscribed to the channel, uh, which I did not ask you to do. So I really appreciate that if you're watching. Hey, he reached out to me and he said, I have a Mimetic Digitalis, uh, which was one of the modules that was on my list. And I said, let's do it. We met up the next day, traded modules, and oh my God, this module is amazing. It's kind of hard for me to describe with words exactly what makes it such a good sequencer for what I'm trying to do. So this is where I'm going to transition to shot B. Hello, shot B. And we're gonna just kind of go through a little bit of this setup here. Uh, these clips that you keep seeing of me performing with this are from the last video that I posted, which was a 30 minute completely improvised jam with this setup. And I want you guys to know that I've only had this module for like four days at this point, and I'm already figuring out amazing ways to use it. So uh, this is really exciting for me and it can only go uphill from here and it already to me sounds great. So let me talk about it a little bit. Um, let me just kind of go through what all is involved in this setup. So right now I'm using the Octatrack and I'm using my modular synth. I'm technically also running into the 1010 blue box. In reality, I probably wouldn't bring it because everything's being mixed down into the Octatrack, 
but I happen to just have my whole desk set up so it's also running in there and getting just a little bit of compression on the end from that. But um, for live sets, I would just take a DI and roll with that. So essentially uh, what's going on here is Octatrack is controlling drums, it's controlling clock, and it also has some flexibility to do uh, my favorite little chopping trick, which I made a video about, you can see right there. I think on that side, maybe it's on that side. I think it's on this side though. Uh, essentially how I have this all set up is I have five static machines all doing different drums uh, or loops. I have track six set up to be a record buffer with all of the LFOs and everything set up like I show in that video. I have track seven to set up to be a through track and I have track eight set up to be my master track, which I'm using uh, a couple of scenes on. I have a low pass scene. I have a sort of high band pass. It's not technically a high pass. It's more of like a high band pass scene set up just to kind of crush things together. And then I also have a scene set up for my side chain, which is uh, really, really ending up being super useful for gluing all of this together. Um, and all that it is on those setups is I have my master track set up to affect the filter on these two tracks. And then on my through track, I have triggers set up that will actually activate an inverted exponential envelope, which will create a side chain. And I'm just using this to fade in the depth of that when I'm on that scene. So it's a pretty simple setup, all things considered, for an octa track. Now the real magic is happening up here. So essentially the core of this setup is the Mimetic Digitalis. I have it set up between uh, interacting kind of cool with a couple modules. So I'm clocking it just from my basic clock source there. And then what I'm also doing is I'm having my Clep Diaz module. I'm not sure if you can see it because of all the cables, but I have the Clep Diaz, uh, which is an amazing kind of clocked modulation source. Uh, but what I'm actually using it for is it has a beginning of cycle signal. And because it's a clocked modulation store source, essentially what it's doing is I can set how many steps it takes until that beginning of cycle trigger goes out. So I'm using that to kind of reset the mimetic digitalis, which means with one or two twists of a knob, I end up being able to entirely change the pattern length. I'm able to suddenly move between really set on the grid to sort of arrhythmic, polyrhythmic, polymetric styles of uh, melodies, which is really awesome. And so this is a little bit of what that sounds like. <laughs> So there's that. Um, that's just a quick little example of already how this is so playable right off the bat. So um, essentially the way this patch is set up is uh, it's essentially a very minimal two voice patch. So I'm taking a square wave out of my Dixie. Uh, I'm sequencing the pitch with track one of the med Medic Digitalis. And then I'm using tracks two through four to modulate the Q pass. So I have the square wave going into the filter, and essentially I'm using tracks two and three to adjust the radiate positions, 
and I'm using track four to adjust the frequency. So you end up getting these really cool stepped frequency patterns, which end up doing some really interesting stuff like this. <laughs> And because of that shred button, I'm really able to modulate things on the dot randomly in really cool ways. So that's already an incredible foundation for something. Just a really driving stepped sequence that you can change between a four step to up to a 16 step all the way. You know, I usually like to keep it at something a little arrhythmic, like a six step or like a 12 step or something like that, just to kind of, or maybe even like a 10 step, just to give a little bit more flavor to uh, the, the melodies that are going on there. Uh, but that's really one of the most important parts of this setup is just being able to control how many steps there are without totally having to like go in menu dive refix some stuff i can just really easily affect it right from this knob here on the clef diaz which is super cool uh the second thing that's really important in the setup is the mimeophone because with any sort of acid style baseline you're gonna want to have some level of a funky repeat on it and you just wait, bring the kick in. You can feel the side chain pumping a little bit. Again, oh my god, there's so much that you can do from there. And with that shred button, what I like to do is I like to just really quickly punch in and out for like a single note on that note CV sequence to create very small random adjustments to it so it feels like it's evolving over time as opposed to just kind of holding it down and totally redoing an entire sequence. So that will sound something like this. Look at that. First try, just pressed it randomly. Amazing, just full of amazing possibilities already, right off the bat. Um, and that's essentially the core of this setup. It's very simple. Um, I have the flexibility to, you know, if I want to with my uh, Octatrack here, because I kind of have all these tracks set up just a little bit like I've selected my kicks I've selected my hi-hats um, most of the time hi-hats are just gonna be doing off beats I've selected this cool little uh this cool funky loop that uh yeah I found through a couple splice packs and uh really cool stuff going on there um but because electron sequencing is so simple and so straightforward i can also just really quickly just change out what the whole vibe of the
So that is just so flexible. It's so simple, but it's really amazing for simple, long-form jams that can just kind of go on as long as you are occasionally pressing a button on the shred on the Mimetic Digitalis, or as long as you are occasionally adjusting a filter cutoff or adjusting the subdivision of your repeats. This can just keep going as long as you need. It's just an absolute blast to play. I've been having just, I've been, I work from home and basically every time I get off my break, I come over here, I sit down and I just lose myself for a couple of minutes, just having an absolute blast with this. Um, the patch is deceptively simple. I know, obviously, if you're new to your rack, all of these cables everywhere, it's like, what's going on? But it's, it's just a couple envelopes from maths controlling the um, actual like note lengths and everything like that. The Mimetic Digitalis doing pretty much all the cool modulation stuff as well as the pitch sequencing. Uh, the Mimeophone doing the Mimeophone thing. The last kind of key to bringing this setup together, I want to shout out one of our Discord members there, Axonodon, uh, mentioned that uh, he had recorded this really cool reel for Morphogene where he had gone to this old abandoned bunker uh, and had just recorded a bunch of creaky metal doors. And that's sort of the glue that's tying all of this together is I've kind of loaded up one of those reels here on the Morphogene and I'm sending it to just a bucket of reverb and... And we have this immediate industrial vibe, this really dark vibe, which then, let's say, mute all my drums. Say I start maybe fading in a, a bit of a voice.
good. Like you just can't argue with that. Ugh. So I know this video has been kind of scattered because I've just been so excited to share this that I just kind of jumped in the video with only just a little bit of preparation there. Um, but I guess my sort of end result here for I guess what it takes for me to create my perfect improvised techno setup is a couple of things. Flexible drums. You need a bass line that is really easy to modulate. Uh, modulate the melody, modulate the filter, modulate the delay or anything like that. I think a squelchy square wave bass line with the delay your set and some ambience, some ambiance, some creaky, creepy noises coming out of a bunch of World War II era bunkers does the trick. And I mean, we're there at this point. So I'm just, I've just been really excited to share this with everybody, kind of talk through this. And so if you liked this, definitely hit thumbs up on the video. If you have any suggestions of what I can do to make this even cooler, I mean, I doubt it, but go ahead. <laughs> and uh, if you want to talk about this a little more, definitely feel free to jump into my Discord, link in the channel description. Thanks to everybody for uh, watching this and have yourself a wonderful day. Bye-bye right through my outro my email goes off that's fine i thought i had turned off notifications boogading